Dear students, now we are going to discuss AM demodulators and operation of synchronous detector in detail. AM demodulators are also called as detectors. Types of AM detectors. Linear detector, nonlinear detector. The example for this nonlinear detector is square law detector and here we are going to use the non-linearity property of the semiconductor diodes or transistors. So next linear detector is further classified into coherent detector, non-coherent detector. So coherent detector we are going to synchronize the carrier signal generated at the receiver side to the carrier at the transmitter side. So both the carriers should be synchronized with each other. So here the example for this coherent detector is synchronous detector. Next non-coherent detector here there is no dependency between the carriers in transmitter and receiver. Example for this non-coherent detector is envelope detector. AM synchronous detector it is also called as coherent detector. Synchronous detector uses locally generated carrier signal which is exactly synchronizing with that of the transmitter side. So both the carrier signals at transmitter side and receiver side should be synchronized. That's why it's called as a synchronous detector. So this is the block diagram of synchronous detector. So in this we are going to use a mixer where we are going to combine both the received amplitude modulated signal and locally generated carrier signal. The output of the mixer is given to the low pass filter. The output of the low pass filter is nothing but the original message signal. Here we are going to mix both the carrier and modulated signal. The incoming signal can be either double sideband suppressed carrier or single sideband suppressed carrier. So this synchronous detector is mainly used to detect either double sideband suppressed carrier or single sideband suppressed carrier, not the double sideband with full carrier or vestigial sideband. It is only for detecting DSB-SC or SSB-SC signal. So here this input signal is multiplied with the carrier signal generated by the local oscillator. The output of the multiplier or the mixer is given as an input to the low pass filter. Low pass filter is used to extract the original modulating signal. Analysis of synchronous detector. If the input signal is double sideband suppressed carrier signal, then the received signal as S of T is equal to AM, AC, cos omega CT, cos omega MT. This AM is nothing but the amplitude of modulating signal. It is the amplitude of the carrier signal. Likewise, this is the angular frequency of carrier signal. This is for modulating signal. So as we have already derived this, right, we can directly use the amplitude modulated signal here as a input. C dash of D. So here C dash represents what? The carrier signal which is locally generated at the detector side which is synchronized with the carrier signal at the transmitter side. Okay, so here C dash of T is equal to cos omega C T. Okay, so this omega C is equal to the carrier signal at transmitter. So the output of the mixer or the multiplier is V1 of t is equal to S of t into C dash of t. So here we have to substitute this two signals and then we can get AM AC cos omega C square t cos omega mt. We know that the formula of cos square theta is equal to what? 1 plus cos 2 theta divided by 2. So the same formula is going to be used here. So this omega cos omega sorry cos square this is not this is cos squared omega ct okay so here cos squared omega ct 
can be replaced as 1 plus cos 2 omega ct divided by 2. Then we have to multiply inside this. We can get the values like this. AM, AC divided by 2. This 2 is a common term and we have to multiply inside this. We can get cos omega mt plus cos 2 omega ct into cos omega mt. This is the output of the multiplier. So this Output is given as an input to the low pass filter. Low pass filter allows only the first term and attenuates the high frequency component. Correct. So, in this case, omega c presents 2 times omega c. As we know that the carrier frequency should always be far greater than the modulating frequency. Twice the carrier frequency means it is very high frequency component. So, this component is not allowed okay so low pass filter can allow only the low frequency component so it allows cos am ac by 2 cos omega mt so the output of the low pass filter is the original modulating signal so this is the output in the next case we have to consider the input signal is single sideband suppressed carrier signal if the input signal is ssb sc then the received signal can be written like this. S of t is equal to am ac divided by 2 cos of omega c minus omega m t. Correct. Because it is having only one sideband. Single sideband means it is having only one sideband. Consider this as the low lower sideband. Okay. So next c dash of t as usual the same frequency. The output of the mixer. Correct. The output of the mixer here it is nothing but non-linear. So we have to multiply both the things and we can get AM AC divided by 2 cos omega C minus omega MT into cos omega CT. So we know that cos A cos B is equal to what? 1 by 2 of cos A minus B plus cos A plus B. So we can write this expression. Okay. So this expression as AM AC divided by 2 of cos of omega c minus omega m here it is minus omega c so we can get the values like this likewise cos of a plus b we are going to add this two value we can get 2 omega c minus omega m divided by 2 then we can write am ac divided by 4 2 into 2 4 and multiply inside this we can get cos omega m t plus Multiply this term with this. Okay, we can get AM AC by 4 cos of 2 omega C minus omega M into T. As I told you, 2 omega C presents me. It is the high frequency component. So, the low pass filter cannot allow the high frequency component through it. It can allow only the low frequency component. Here, the bandwidth of the low pass filter is W. Okay, which is equal to the modulating frequency. So, it allows only the modulating signal. So, modulating signal is nothing but the original message signal or baseband signal. So, we are going to give this V1 of T as the input to the low pass filter and we can get the output as AM AC divided by 4 cos omega MT. Okay. So, from this we can write one more thing. We know that AM cos omega MT is nothing but m of t that is the message signal multiplied with ac divided by 4 okay so this is the amplitude added because of this modulation okay so here we can get the message signal as the output disadvantage in synchronous detector so here phase error is the major problem in synchronous detector as i told you in synchronous detector, the carrier signal should be exactly synchronized with each other at both transmitter side as well as receiver side. If there is a phase difference between the carrier signal at synchronous detector and the transmitter carrier signal, then synchronous phase error occurs. Here we can say, so in the previous derivation we mentioned that the carrier signal generated locally at the detector is nothing but cos omega ct which is exactly synchronized with the transmitted signal. 
suppose there is a phase difference okay so this phi is nothing but the phase difference between c of t and c dash of t this is c dash represents what it represents receiver side c of t represents transmitter side so this is the phase difference between transmitter and receiver if this phase difference is equal to 0 then we can get the modulating output as such there is no difference suppose the phase difference is 90 degree then there is no output this is the major problem in synchronous detector so we have to be very conscious to select the carrier signal okay so the phase error can be eliminated when the carrier at the detector is exactly synchronized with the transmitted carrier it should be properly or we can add the term as exactly okay there is no phase, phase difference at all okay that's it about the synchronous detector or coherent detector